Hey Northern Beekeepers, welcome back. Um, today we're going to discuss winterization of your hives and a couple different ways you can do to uh, you know help your hives get through the winter. The one thing that a lot of us here in the North Country face is you know winter survivability. You know our bees do good through the summer and the fall. The really challenging part for us is the winter where the bees have a really hard time getting out of the hive due to snow and cold. You know, they might get two, maybe three cleansing flights all winter. If they're lucky, some winter they may not get any. So today we're going to talk about a couple of different methods that I've used in the past. Um, it's not the way to do it. It's just a couple different ways that I've been successful. Um, in particular, last year, um, <clears throat> I overwintered seven hives here in Wisconsin and got all seven through. So I'm going to discuss that method I did last year and then, you know, some experimentations I've done in the past and uh, you know had different success. So here in front of me I've got um, two 5 over 5 uh, nukes. Um, I'm going to be wintering several colonies like this and uh, so really what you want to do in your yard is if you had your uh, hives you know spread far apart you're going to want to try to shove them as close together as you can. Um, having the hives closer is going to create a bigger thermal mass what that means is that's going to help hold the heat in. You know, one of these hives is sitting off by itself. It's very small. They're going to have a really hard time keeping this small space warm and the bees alive. So when you shove them together, you know, you're going to have a combined heat effect of both hives producing the heat. They're going to share heat in the middle and they're just going to be much better off. Same principle if you're doing double deeps, singles, warre you know anything else whatever you can do to create a bigger thermal mass that's what you're going to want to do uh, the other thing that's going to be pretty critical is wind breaks you want to try to put your hives in a position where you're going to keep the north and west winds off them primarily because that's what we're experiencing most where the cold is going to come from so if you can put them um, on the side of the building uh, a tree row um, next to your house even on a south facing area that's going to be best. What I have used in the past out of my yard is just throw up a couple sheets of plywood, put some T posts, um, you know, put that plywood three or four feet right behind the hives. That way, when the wind hits it, the wind goes over the hives. It doesn't hit directly on the wind. Anyone out in the winter knows if you get out of the wind, even though it might be zero, it doesn't feel quite as bad. So, anything you can do to keep the wind off is definitely going to be a big help. So, as you can see on these hives, <clears throat> I've got these uh, entrance discs down here. Um, they've got three different openings. they got a normal queen excluder and kind of a vented. So you're going to want to move that and try to reduce that opening as much as you can just to keep the mice out. Where the mice like to get in the hives because it's nice and warm. Um, you know, put uh, some kind of a quarter inch hardware cloth if you don't have the entrance disc. Something like that to keep the mice out. So that's going to be another big concern. <clears throat> another thing I like to use and uh, for an inner cover is this reflective um, foam insulation. You can find this at any of your uh, big box hardware stores, Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, etc. Um, it's just got, uh, it's like a bubble wrap and it's got this reflective coating on there. The kind I bought at uh, you know, the local store is called Reflectix. Comes in a big roll. You can get it in different heights. Uh, I think this is 24 inch. They've got 16 and 48. Comes in, in like a 25 to 100 foot roll. You can cut this with scissors or a, or a knife pretty easy. So I like putting this down on the top for an inner cover because that seals everything up nice. You don't have any air gaps. And the heat that does come from the bees will hit that and kind of reflect back down on the, on the winter cluster. Um, the other thing I like to do is put this shim board on here. And then I drill a hole in the top for a top entrance. Um, that's primarily because we get a lot of snow here in Wisconsin and other areas in the north. <clears throat> that way if the lower entrance for some reason freezes over or snows over and you're not able to get to it, and there is a warm day where the bees can get out, the bees will use this readily. Um, I used this a lot last year and had really good success. 
The bees were coming in and out of that all the time during the cleansing flights. So they never even used the lower entrance as the cluster moves up into the hive. So that's pretty nice. Um, what I do is I just took a, I just bought a one by six again at the uh, your uh, home improvement store. Took it on my table saw and cut them in half. Um, you can even go down to two inches. So what that'll do also is allow you to put in, you know, some dry sugar or winter patties on top of the frames for an additional emergency source of feed in case your bees run out of feed. So that'll allow you to put, you know, pollen patties in the spring, you know, dry sugar, candy, candy boards, whatever you like to use right on top. Um, the bees will come up there, they'll get on that. They'll be nice and happy. So these are a couple of methods that I use with the nukes. I also do these shim boards, feed boards, whatever you like to call them. I put those on my, I've got eight frame and 10 frame equipment. So I like to put those on top. <clears throat> and again, you're gonna, you're gonna have your hives close together. If you happen to have any big gaps in your wood, you know, based on, uh, you know, the woodworking or whatever, use duct tape. Um, duct tape up any of the gaps. You don't want any kind of wind to blow through. Um, wind is a real killer with the bees. Wind and moisture. So if you can keep those two things off, try to help hold the heat in, you're going to be much more successful here in the winter. <clears throat> so at this point, what you've done is you've added your, your top board. Um, you've added this uh, feed shim. You've pushed your hives close together as tight as you can. You know, if you've got some bigger gaps in the center because of whatever, right in here, you can uh, cut you a piece of cardboard, you know, of the exact dimensions. When you do that, you know, again, shove them together. That cardboard will help with the insulation and, you know, transferring the heat between the hives. Um, the one thing I'm going, I would recommend using is this uh, two inch pink foam board. Again, you can find this in any of your hardware stores. They sell it in, you know, half inch, one inch, and two inches the thickest. Um, I always go as heavy as I can on insulation. It's not gonna hurt anything. Having more insulation is actually gonna help the bees do much better. So with these, you would cut them, you know, to whatever dimensions of equipment you have that you're gonna be using. These would go, could go on the sides. Um, you know, front, back, top. Um, you can ratchet strap these together to kind of hold everything together because obviously these are going to flap around. Duct tape, you know, whatever, whatever method you have and uh, kind of however much money you want to spend to help your bees survive. <clears throat> the other thing I, I use quite a bit, and I used last year, this is called concrete blanket. Basically what it is is a tarp with uh, insulation in the center, you know, a quarter and a half inch insulation. These sheets are um, six inches wide by 25 feet long. So if you only have a couple hives, this may not be the best method to use, but if you have several, <clears throat> you know, this would be a, you know, something you could take a look at. Um, these you don't really find at, at your home depot stores, stuff like that. You're gonna have to go to more of a, a contractor supply store to find these. Um, where I live, close to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, there's a place called Lincoln Contractors. It's over by the cat dealership if on the on the interstate. Um, they sell those in a three pack, so you can get three of them or you can just buy one or whatever. Um, they're, I can't remember how much they are a piece. They're maybe 25, 30 bucks a piece. So they're not too bad on price. And uh, all you do is you just kind of double them up and again, in case everything wrapped around like a big blanket, like you would on your on the couch or something when you're trying to keep yourself warm, you know, tie those down, weight them down, put uh, cinder blocks or whatever on there to keep the wind from blowing them off. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> with a couple hives, you know, you could double this up and you're gonna have a pretty good insulation. You know, the black is gonna help absorb the heat. So that's something you want. So if you double this up here, <clears throat> you know, you've got quite a bit of uh, insulation on top. The air gaps are going to also help with the insulation. So this is a method I'm going to be using um, 
put in the foam board on the outside uh, colonies for additional um, insulated value and then wrapping these up um, <clears throat> with the concrete blanket. So th those are uh, one method I've used. Get these out of the way here real quick. Another method I've used is basically taking this, this pink foam board and uh, you know building this just a little bit bigger than the hives and that way you can take it and slide it over the top of your colony kind of like a bee, co uh, a bee cozy a beer cozy like a can cooler that you'd use in the summer for a can of beer um, this would help again with the insulation you want to get it within about a quarter inch on each side so you got uh, quite a bit of uh, you know of the area touching what you can do is uh, once you cut these pieces you can buy a can of that uh, spray foam filler and that's what you'd use to glue these together this is this uh, yellowish stuff here it kind of leaked out but uh, this works pretty good I used this two years ago with uh, pretty good success um, the one thing that I didn't like about it is uh, you know my abilities at that time weren't uh, quite as good as cutting this with a, a knife and the, you know the cuts weren't quite square <clears throat> so I had a hard time getting off the hives um, in order to be able to check on them a little bit easier in the winter time so if it was a warm day you're trying to slide this up sometimes it gets stuck on there I was almost pulling the boxes apart so that's just based on my ability to construct it square and, and the right dimensions but Anyways, you could uh, you could use that method. Um, the problem with this, you know, is uh, with these I didn't have the, the top entrance, um, so the bees, you know, had to use the bottom um, to get out during cleansing flights. If you don't keep the entrances clear, you know, for cleansing flights, it might pull for dead bees, and then the bees can't get out during the, the good weather. Um, I guess the one thing I did forget to mention with these is, uh, you know, for the front of the hives. Uh, you can put tar paper on the front that's black um, you can find it again at your local uh, big box stores and you just cut that and staple that to the front that would help absorb the heat it would block out you know more wind and uh, that'll help there um, some people up here they just wrap with just the tar paper and they've had some success I tend to uh, Try to go a little bit overboard on that insulation if I can, because that just helps the bees a lot better. Um, another method I've used in the past is I put <clears throat> all my uh, colonies up next to the house on the south side. Didn't use any insulation, unfortunately that year they all died. Um, so since then, and that's been a couple years ago, I've, I've been uh, you know experimenting with the different levels of insulation and uh, different ways to do that. So there's a few people on the uh, interwebs that uh, have built these enclosures that have some videos out there. Um, Vino Farm, he did a video last year of uh, cutting these, kind of taking them together so they fold out flat for easier storage. He had a really good video on that. Um, there's an individual I follow on Facebook uh, named Rick Williams. He lives up in... Uh, northern Canada somewhere up in Alberta and uh, all his he uses the polystyrene hives with uh, great success and also using the these type of foam board slip on covers over his hives and uh, he does he has really good su success up there so there's a number of people on the internet that you can uh, check out and see what they're doing um, these are some of the methods that I've used in the past and kind of stuff that I'm going to be using this year. So um, here we are today. It's uh, October 12th. Uh, it's like 30 degrees outside right now and snowing. We're getting a little cold snap here. Um, so it'll be time for me to start enclosing these hives, getting them winterized here in the next week and getting these, uh, these girls wrapped up. I've already got several of them um, pushed together from my out yard. My yard here at home, I got a get everybody together and uh, get them ready for winter. So hope everyone has uh, some good success this winter. 
you know, try out a couple of these methods if you're here in the North Country. I know you'll be successful if you do that. Um, just think, you know, more insulation is better. Wind is a killer and moisture is a killer. So anything you can do to block the wind, get the moisture away from the hives through uh, upper entrances, uh, moisture boards, um, you know, quilts, which is a quilt. <coughs> would be uh, similar to this box here. You can just put a window screen on it, put some wood shavings, um, old cloth, something there that'll absorb the moisture. Um, the Vivaldi boards, I've never used a Vivaldi board, but I know people have had pretty good success with those as well. So <clears throat> there's, a, there's a number of things that uh, folks can do. Try them out. Um, hope everyone has a good winter. Try to make a couple more videos here before the end of the bee season. And uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.